Right, good morning and welcome to Mass Ataka online class. In today's video, we'll be talking about electronic configuration, right? Um, electronic configuration is simply, uh, you can write, electronic configuration is basically the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus, right? According to Niels Bohr, okay? According to Niels Bohr, all right? Um, electrons revolves around the nucleus in circular parts called orbit or shell positioned positioned at some distance from the nucleus all right and the shell is denoted by k l m n and so on the shells are denoted by k shell l shell m n e t c okay as follows like that Okay, KCL is the closest. If you have an atom like this, this is the nucleus of an atom. The first shell you are seeing is called the KCL. This is the KCL. That is the closest. And then the next one you are having is what? The L shell. Okay. The next one you are having is what? The M shell. And so on and so forth. All right. Uh, so now we have that um, in filling electron into the shell electrons are filled from the lower energy level to the higher energy level okay this means that k shell is filled completely you know the closer you are to the nucleus the the lower your energy level okay so k shell has the lowest energy level followed by l shell followed by m shell and so on and so forth and the law says that what that the k shell must be filled completely before you move to the next energy level okay we feel it according to the to the energy level and you should note that the maximum electron for k is two okay maximum electron for k is two for l is eight for m is um uh, 18 and so on and so forth and we have a formula to calculate the maximum energy level okay the maximum number of electron each energy level can can hold okay you should know that the maximum the max the maximum electron each energy level can take each uh each energy level each energy level takes all right the maximum level uh, it the takes is given by 2n squared okay it's given by 2n squared right where n is called the principal energy level or the principal quantum number we'll get to that point okay the point of quantum number but for now let us take it as the the principal energy level all right so now if you know that the way i told you that um according to the shell the shells we have that the first one is what is k shell and for the k shell the principal energy level, the principal, or let me call it N. My N for K shell is 1 and so on and so forth, okay? This is 1 and uh, K, L, M, N. Let me just stop here, okay? This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, to get the maximum electron it can hold, the maximum, the maximum electron it can hold is by what? 2 raised power d, that is 2 in bracket of 1 squared, okay, which is what? 2 in bracket of 1, which is what? 2, okay, for the next one is what? 2 in bracket of 2 squared, which is what? 2 in bracket of 4, which is 8. The next one is what? 2 in bracket of 3 squared, which is what? Uh, 2 in bracket of 9, sorry, which is equal to what? 18. And the last one here is 2 in bracket of 4 squared, which is 2 in bracket of 16, which is what? 32. And so on and so forth so this is the maximum electron they can take okay are you getting it but uh this is the maximum electron they can take but in feeling of electron in feeling of electron the maximum they can hold in feeling of electron the maximum they can hold for k for k k will hold um two electrons please write that down l we hold eight electrons okay uh m will not hold 18 but rather eight electrons all right uh, i would i will show you that and then um n again is eight 
do I say 18? Okay, N is 18. Now, I'll show you why it is like this, all right? Even in an electronic configuration. In fact, anytime you are writing the electronic configuration in terms of KLM shell, okay, then you can use the first 20 element. If it's the first 20 element, please use KLM shell if you like. But the best one to use is called the SPDF notation. We are coming to that. SPDF, all right? We are coming to that. Then, uh, let me show you why the, the, the K shell is 2 and um, the L shell is 8. Now, in SPDF notation, each of these, the maximum electron S can take is 2. We'll come to that anyways. This one is, um, if you add 4 to this, you have 6. Add 4 to this, you have 10. Add 4 to this, you have 14. Now, I have that the first one is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. And I'm done with 2. Then 3 is 3S2, 3P6. I'm done with 3. Then 4S2, uh, 3D10. And then 4P6. You may not understand this now, but I'm going to show you how we got all this. Now, if you look at this, this is the first shell. And the first shell, the maximum electron is what? 2. So for 1, 1 is what? For 1. You know, this is the principal quantum number. Okay? For 1, when it is 1, we are talking about uh, the K shell. And the K shell, the maximum electron there is 2. But if it is 2, you are talking about the L shell. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Alright? If it is 2, you are talking about the, the these 2. These 2. Now, this one. Now, that is 2 plus this. That is 8. If you come to the third shell, you see the way I'm closing it. For the third shell, we have only 3S2 and 3P6 in the third shell. So that's why we have the maximum of 8. And then this one is what? Uh, this is 18. So please just know that for K is 2, L is 8, M is 8, and N is what? 18. That is in filling electron. But if you are asked the maximum number of electrons they take, use this formula to get it. All right? Okay. So, we're going to solve some questions to illustrate that. All right? An example said, write the electronic configuration. Example said, write, write the electronic configuration of an atom with 25 electrons. Now, this is very, very simple. What do you do? You will know that you can decide to draw it or decide to just write it. You know that this is the nucleus. If this is the nucleus, you decide to draw it. The first one is the K shell. And I told you when filling, K shell takes what? Two electrons. I have one, two. You move to the next one. It's filled. Remember, you must you must fill from this from the inside, then you move outside. So I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one takes the maximum of eight. You go to the next one. The next one is what? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Don't forget that this one is what? K shell. The K shell, the L shell, the M shell. So the next one we are moving to is what? The N shell. So this one is taking 1, 2. So I have 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right? So this is the N shell. And if you don't if you don't want to draw it, you just want to write it, you write your 2, comma, 8, comma, 8, comma, you add this plus this is 10 plus this is 18. Uh if you subtract, how many is remaining? I think let me say seven. This is 18. Yes, this is 25. All right. Don't forget that this is your K, L, M, and N. Now, immediately you have this is the electronic configuration, and electronic configuration helps us to know. The position of that uh, atom or element in the periodic table. Now, if you look at, if it has four shells, it means that what? That the period is four. All right? The period is being determined by the number of shells. So, for this particular atom, the period, the period is what? Four. Because I have the first, second, third, and fourth shell. Why the group? The group is gotten from the last digit you are seeing. And last digit there is seven. So, this particular element is in what? Is in group 7, period 4, in the periodic table. All right? So, let us write the electronic configuration of the, the first 20 elements using the, the using shell. Using shell. 
okay uh the first 20 element uh you can master it all right if you want to master it um you can use we use a song to master it and that song said um darling jesus darling jesus oh my darling jesus you are a wonderful lord i love you so much darling jesus oh my darling jesus you are a wonderful lord if you know this if you can remember this song you can now name it it is let's name it hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon potassium calcium so you know how to sing it so once you can sing it you can get it so the first one is what hydrogen hydrogen uh helium helium okay this is helium beryllium okay lithium before beryllium lithium uh lithium beryllium all right boron carbon nitrogen oxygen oxygen fluorine neon sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur okay uh, let me clean phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon chlorine as uh, chlorine argon then potassium and calcium all right so if you want to uh, master it okay if you want to cram it you can sing the song the way i sang it before i said hydrogen he hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon, sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon potassium calcium darling jesus darling jesus Oh, my darling Jesus, you are a wonderful Lord. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you are a wonderful Lord. As simple as that. So, once you know it, you know that this is the first 20 elements. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 18 19 20 the first 20 element so and their number is the number of electron they have which is the atomic number all right so if you want to write the configuration of an atom with one electron so we have what just the k shell needs to be filled so i just what i just have one then this one is what um they take can take the maximum of okay let me write it here k l m n Oh, and so on and so don't forget that k takes the maximum of what um two but i have just one here so i'll just have just one here but helium is what two to complete lithium two and one you see the way it's going beryllium is what uh four two comma two are you getting it then the next one should be what boron five two and three because don't forget that this one takes the maximum of eight so this one is what two and four two and five two and six two and seven two and eight okay this one is what two eight and one you're seeing it two eight and two two eight and three two eight and what 
I think I missed something. Who did I miss? It's too close to each other. Permit me to, to rewrite it. It's too close to each other. So I have number 10, number 11. Hmm. Sodium, new sodium. Number 12, magnesium. Right? 13, aluminium. 14, silicon. Okay? So let me let me complete it here. Silicon phosphorus. That is number fifteen. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. Okay. Sixteen. Sulfur. Chlorine. Argon. Seventeen. Chlorine. Chlorine. Argon. Eighteen. Argon. Then potassium and calcium, 19 potassium. 20 is calcium. All right. So this one has um, 11. 11 is going to be 2,8. 8 is complete. I cannot write 9. So the highest it takes is 8. So you move to the next one, 1. So for this one, uh, 12 is going to be 2, 8, 2, 13, 2, 8, 3, 14, 2, 8, 4. 15, 15, 2, 8, uh, 5, 16, 2, 8, 6, 2, 8, 7, 2, 8, 8. This one, M share is complete. So here will not be what? 2, 8, 8, 1. And here will be what? 2, 8, 8, 2. So this is the electronic configuration of the first 20 elements. What does it mean? Hydrogen is in what? Now, I told that the number of shells shows the group and the period. So, this one ends in 1. That is group 1. And, but it has just one shell, period 1. This one is what? Ends in 2, group 2. But one shell, period 2. This one is what? It ends in 1, group 1. But how many period? Period 2. It's in period. The period, the period is what? 2. That is in period 2. This one is what? Period 2, group 2. Period 2, group 3. Period 2, group 4. Period 2, group 5. Period 2, group 6. Uh, period 2, group 7. Now, period 2, group 8. And the group 8 are the noble gas, the saturated. Anyone that, that is, like, this one is saturated as well. Okay? Anyone that the, the, the number of shell is just complete, then it is saturated. Helium is saturated. Neon is saturated. Which other one? Uh, look at this one. 8-8 eight, eight is saturated. So that is that. So that is how it is. If you look at calcium, calcium is in group what? Group 2, period what? 1, 2, 3, 4. Period 4. So that is that. So we keep moving. Now, another thing you need to know is that um, you are right. Write something right. But when an atom loses or gains electron, the configuration changes. Because ions are formed. You know, how, how do we form an ion? An ion is formed when an atom loses or gains an electron. Don't forget. You can go over to our former video. So if I have an atom A, okay, and gain one electron, so what do we have? We have A minus because he gained negativity. But if I have an atom A that loses an electron, it will be what? A plus. Because it gave out his problem. Don't forget that. And once an atom does that, something has already changed. So the electronic configuration will change as well. So let us consider some, some atoms that are like that. Now look at, um, for example, let's use sodium. Sodium, NA. You know, the, the formula is, uh, and the, the symbol is NA. And normally, sodium has uh, how many uh, configuration? Sodium has, uh, I think, 11. This is the atomic number it has 11 electrons so that is the atomic number is 11 and if you want to write the electronic configuration of sodium it's going to be what 2 comma 8 comma 1 is it not true but if you can remember that na 
we lose one electron to become what? Na plus. Now, one electron is out here. So what I have here is what? Is 10. You see that the electronic configuration you have is what? 2,8. You see? The electronic configuration of the ion, that is Na plus, becomes 2,8. So another one, chlorine, Cl. Cl is how many? I think Cl is 17, right? If Cl is 17, the electronic configuration is going to be what? 2,8,7. But if you remember that Cl, which is 17, is a non-metal. And non-metals do what? They gain electron. Once it gains one electron, it's going to be what? Cl minus. And Cl minus shows that the electron is now what? 18. So the electronic configuration will not change. Cl minus will not change to what? 2,8,8. You see? So another thing you need to observe is that what? The electronic configuration of ions are the same as the noble gas. If you look at the noble gas, argon, argon is 2,8,8. And the same thing with chlorine, 2,8,8. I see that. So they have similar electronic uh, configuration. And any, actor, uh, any element that has similar electronic configuration are said to be isoelectronic. Isoelectronic. Okay? isoelectronic please don't forget that that is very very important so you have to say that what chlorine ion and argon are isoelectronic why because they have similar electronic uh, configuration so let's do another one okay so uh get this for me write an elect uh, uh write the electronic configuration of an element with uh, maybe 30 electrons all right um don't forget i told that once you pass the first 20 elements please use the spdf notation it will be easier for you to determine i will teach you that now than using this one this one sometimes confuses if it's the first 20 elements you can use this okay so but let's just use it solution I have that this is what 2 comma 8 comma 8 comma how many is there? this is 18 18 minus this I'm going to have um, 18 I'm going to have um, 12 right 12 now but the problem now if you look at this you see that that the problem here is that uh, there is nothing like a, a group 12 is there anything like group 12 no I don't think we have anything like group 12 in the periodic table so i think we can reduce this to I think um eight again comma this is 10 16 then comma four so this is group four period what one two three four five period five so that is that i thought that is always very confusing so let's move into the main thing which is the spdf notation all right so right electronic configuration spdf notation electronic configuration using spdf all right so we want to use this now to determine the electronic configuration so write a note right electronic configuration in terms of spdf notation okay that's the topic that i want to talk about right in the long run of configuration Electrons are arranged in SPDF orbital, okay? But there are four quantum numbers which determine the energy, uh, energy of the electrons in the orbital. So before we talk about writing the SPDF notation, we need to know about the four uh, quantum numbers. So write for me the four quantum numbers, the four quantum numbers. Now, we know the four quantum numbers by palms. The one you wear, palms. Okay? Palms. And the palms show that the first quantum number is called the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number. The second one is the what? The azimuthal or subsidiary. Azimuthal. Azimuthal. Azimuthal or subsidiary quantum number 
the third one is called the emona magnetic quantum number magnetic quantum number okay and the final one is called the spin quantum number the spin the spin quantum number all right now in all this quantum number we we'll represent this one as what n we we'll represent this one as n and we'll represent this one as what l why we present this one is as what m uh m of l anyways and then the the last one is what m of s or just some some denote it as just s the spin quantum number now all these things are related to each other we get this one from this one we get this one from this one we get this one from this one all right and i'm going to explain it very well for you to understand them we solve problems relating to that all right so now i'll write a note Take the first one, the principal quantum number. Let's talk about the first one, right? The principal quantum number is denoted by N, has an integral value of 1. It has an integral value of 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? 4. 4 K shell, L shell, M shell, and N shell, respectively, all right? Now, the maximum possible number of electrons in a shell. The number possible of electrons in a shell is given by, don't forget the formula, to get the maximum number of electrons in a shell is given by what? 2n squared. I told you that. And I told that where n is what? The principal quantum number. So, to get the, the, the maximum number of electrons k shell can hold, don't forget that k is what? 1. L is 2. M is 3. And n is 4. So to get this one, you, you do the same thing the way we did it there. So it's going to be what? Uh, this is 2 into 1 squared. And 2 into 2 squared. 2 into 3 squared. 2 into 4 squared. Then you get the answer. So this one is 2, 8, um, 18, and 32. And so on and so forth. That is the maximum number of electrons. All right? Then another way to know principal quantum number in SPDF notation, the principal quantum number is gotten by the coefficient of what you have. For example, if I have 1s2, the principal quantum number here is that 1 you are seeing. All right? If you have 4p6, for example, the principal quantum number there is 4. Please don't forget that. It will be very, very useful to, to us. Okay? So the second one, the second one is called the Izumuta quantum number. And the Izumuta quantum number, right? I think that quantum number gives the sub energy level. It gives the sub energy level in each main energy level as n minus two. So to get the 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 isomuta quantum number, to get the isomuta quantum number, which is L, we can call it the spin quantum, the subsidiary quantum number. Sorry. So this is given by what formula n minus one. All right. And don't forget that um, it must be less than or equal to this. It must be less than or equal to this. So, anytime they gave you a Izumuta quantum number, please know that the Izumuta quantum number cannot be greater than the, the principal quantum number. It's very, very important. So, it's gotten by the principal quantum number minus 1. So, once you have the principal quantum number subtracted from 1, you get the Izumuta quantum number. So, so now in SPDF notation, in SPDF notation, when n is 1, if n is equal to 1, if n is equal to 1, we have that the, the, the isomuta quantum number is equal to what? 1 minus 1, which is what? 0. So the isomuta quantum number for s, and we call it what? The s orbital. The s orbital. So when the principal quantum number is 0, we call it what? The s orbital. Please. Very, very important. When it is 0, we call it the s orbital. Then let's check when n is 2. Let's put it in this formula. My L will now be equal to what? 2 minus 1, which is what? 1. But which is 1. And we call it what? The P orbital. The P orbital. The P orbital. Right? Now when n is 3. When n is equal to 3, we have that L is equal to what? N minus 1. So, L is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So, 
if the pre, the isomuta quantum number is two, we call it what? S P D D D orbital. D orbital. All right. Then when it is four, when n is equal to four, then my L will now be what? Um, four. Four minus one, which is equal to three, and we call it the F what orbital. Now, so if you want to determine your SPDF notation, my SPDF notation is got from the isomuta quantum number by 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if the isomuta quantum number is 0, know that they are talking about S. If it is 1, they are talking about what? P. If it is 2, they are talking about what? D. If it is 3, they are talking about what? F. So if somebody gives you something like this, if somebody give you um if somebody give you uh that n is equal to four and my l is equal to zero what does it mean it simply means your four s how did i get the four s i told you that the principal quantum number is always their coefficient it's always their coefficient so i am having that four as a coefficient and l is zero and if l is zero we know that it is what s orbital so that is why i have that it is s so if somebody say that n is equal to five and l is equal to maybe three so what do we see it will not be what five f you see it's very simple to get it is simply as what five f so another thing that we can use um this i zoom to quantum number to determine is um the the energy level okay in other words, to determine the actual energy, sorry, the actual energy. They can ask you that in exam. The actual energy. To get the actual energy, actual, actual energy. To get the actual energy, actual energy is simply equal to what? The principal quantum number plus the isomuta quantum number. The principal quantum number plus what? The isomuta quantum number. So write it down. Note, very, very important statement. To get the actual energy, it is what? The principal quantum number plus the azimuth quantum number. So example, example, they say find find the actual energy of maybe five five p, for example. Okay, you now tell them solution the actual energy. The actual energy is equal to what? My n. If you look at this, see that my n is equal to what? The coefficient which is five and my l is equal to what p s p d s is zero one two three so this is two so therefore the actual energy is simply five plus two which is what seven so seven is the actual energy of five p so another thing that um the isomuta quantum number helps us to know is the shape the shape of the of your s p d f orbitals the shape all right and the shape of s orbital is sphere spherical in nature is sphere we have something sphere like this this is my s orbital all right why my p orbital my p orbital is a dumbbell is a dumbbell shape so this is my p orbital okay then another thing is what d d my d my d orbital is a double dumbbell double dumbbell something like this and uh double dumbbell so this is my d orbital d orbital then for my f the shape is complicated so we don't really uh, know the shape is complicated all right so the next thing you need to know about um okay we have tried for that so the next one we are moving to is the magnetic quantum number the magnetic quantum number and in the magnetic quantum number okay all right right uh this quantum number gives the number of orbitals in each energy sub level in in other words magnetic quantum number gives the number of sub the number of orbitals from the isomuta quantum number 
as shown below. Now, uh, I thought that each of them are connected. Don't forget that this one is given by L, and the formula is what? N minus 1. All right? Then this one is gotten from this person. Okay? This one is gotten from this person, and I'm going to tell you how they are related. Uh, in magnetic quantum number for S, S, P, D, F. Now, watch. You know that this one changes now. The principal quantum number adjusts their coefficient depending on where they are. Uh -huh. Now, but in um, in our L, our L, I told that this is what? This is 0, 1, 2, 3. All right? Uh -huh. Now, to get this one, this one is the, the magnetic quantum number of this one is just 0. But the magnetic quantum number of this one is given by minus 1, comma, 0 and 1. This one is gotten by minus 2, comma, minus 1, comma, 0, comma, 1, comma, 2. Why this one is gotten by what? Minus 3, comma, minus 2, comma, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, if you look at that, you see that, that the number of orbitals, it helps us to, don't forget that it helps us to show the number of orbitals that we have. So, the number of orbitals we have for this one is just one orbital. Number of orbital. Number of orbital. This one is just one orbital. Why this one is what? Three orbitals. Okay? Why this one is, is what? This one is five orbitals. Why this one is what? Seven orbitals. So this is one. Let me write it. One, three, five, and seven. All right? For SPDF notation. Now, if you look at this, you see that this one is related to L by what? I think is um, two, two, two L plus one. Let's check it out. Two L plus one. Let us check it. Let us check it. So this is equal to what? Um, two times zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. We've gotten this one. Two times one is two. Plus one is three. So if you want to check it from here, let us check it for the first one. To get the number of orbital or the magnetic quantum number. So the magnetic quantum number M is gotten by the number of shells now is gotten by what? 2L plus 1. So that is what? 2 into, my L here is 0. 2 into 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. The other one is what? 2 into 1 plus 1, which is what? 3. The other one is what? 2 into 2 plus 1, which is what? 5. And the last one is what? 2 into 3 plus 1, which is what? 7. So you see how they are related to each other. Magnetic quantum number is related by what? By the isometric quantum number by 2L plus 1. So if you decide to substitute L as N minus 1, we are going to see that this is what? 2 into N minus 1, then plus 1. So this is this time this you have what 2n minus 2 plus 1, which is what 2n plus minus 1. Okay, so uh, if you want to go direct from 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 principal quantum number to magnetic quantum number, you will use what 2n minus 1. But I like students to know how they are related to each other. Just know that the first one principal quantum number is n. Okay. Uh -huh. And then your isometric quantum number is L, which is equal to N minus 1. Why the magnetic quantum number M is equal to what? 2L plus 1. The sign will change. 2L plus 1. All right? Then let's go to the spin quantum number. Now, another thing the, uh, the magnetic quantum number is telling us is that that, um, that S orbital has just one type of S orbital. All right? Then in P orbital, it has three, three orbitals. That is what? Those three orbitals are the Px, the Py, and the Pz. Px, Py, and the Pz. Okay? Why this one has five? Why the other one has um, seven? So, that is that. So, for the last one, which is the spin quantum number. The last one, which is the spin... Come to number before we talk about 
how to write the electronic configuration all right the spin quantum number spin now for the spin quantum number all right this has the value of minus half or half the value of spin quantum number can be minus half or sorry plus half or minus half all right uh, that is plus or minus half shows okay they said this has the value of minus half plus half and it shows that electron spin in in the orbital in the opposite direction electron cannot spin in the same direction okay this plus half shows that what that it spins up okay why the minus half shows spinning down they, they spin in opposite uh, direction all right the spin quantum number which shows the electron the electron moving up is donated by this the one that shows that it is moving up is donated by this and the value is plus half the one that is shows that it's going down is noted by this and is showing what minus half so write it they said the spin quantum number which shows the electron moving up is denoted by is noted by this right and the one that shows that the electron is moving down is denoted by this write it down the arrow pointing up is called spin up why the one pointing down is is called what spin down and the value of spin up is plus half why the value of spin down is minus half you can write it down they say that spin quantum number is showing that the electron in an orbital cannot point in the same direction this means that one must be pointing up why the other one must be pointing down like i have already explained they say this means that an ob an orbital with an orbital we take the maximum of two electron because if an orbital takes more than two electron then we'll be having uh an, an orbital pointing in the same direction you see so they say that this means that orbitals will take the maximum of two electron because if an orbital takes more than two electron then some of the electron will be pointing in the same direction which means which will be contrary to the spin quantum number therefore s orbital will be having the maximum of two electron because it has just one orbital so if you remember see the way they are related now i told you that uh in the uh the last one the magnetic quantum number that the number of it shows the magnetic quantum number shows the number of what orbitals each of them has and we say that s has what just one orbital since it has one orbital the spin quantum number will tell you that what it will take the maximum of two if it points up if it spin up it will spin down but for s orbital s orbital has the maximum of three it has the maximum of what three orbitals if you remember the way we said it that is 2l plus one all right and 2l plus one is what 2 into 0 plus 1 which gave us what 1 orbital why for for p sorry this is for p p gave us what 2 into 1 plus 1 which is what 3 so let's share this into 3 if we share this into 3 we will have what first of all you spin up spin up spin up then before you spin down spin down spin down so the maximum of uh, the maximum electron p can take is 6 because it has um three orbitals since it has three orbitals and each orbital must contain two electrons so therefore p will take the maximum electron of what six s will take the maximum electron of what two so let's go to d d from here said two into two plus one which is what two times two four plus one five so i have five so since it's going to have five one one two one two three four five uh -huh. so and each of them is taking two so spin up you first of all spin up before you spin down so what does it mean it means that what they are 10 electrons so therefore uh, our um, our uh, our d electron uh, d orbital takes what maximum of 10 electrons then finally for f for f said 2 into 3 
plus one, which will give you two times three, six plus one, seven. So if they have seven in number, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have one spin up, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We spin down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what does it mean? It shows that what? That F orbital will take the maximum of what? 14 electrons. So this is what? Two electrons. Uh, if you add four here, you have six electrons. Add four here, 10. And add four here, you have what? 14. So in spin quantum number, spin quantum number helps us to, to know the maximum electron each of the orbital will take. And it is related by the, the uh, magnetic quantum number by what? 2m. 2 times m. So if the magnetic quantum number is um is what is two is one for example therefore it will have two electrons and it is s don't forget that it is s uh -huh. and the other one having three will give you what six p and so on and and so forth you see that this is very very simple okay All right. So, all right. In other words, I've, I've explained how these have uh, different orbitals. But let's go to the KLM shell. In terms of shell, how can we get the spin quantum number in terms of shell? In terms of shell, we see that, um, that the number of electron is gotten by the same formula, uh, 2n squared. Uh, don't forget that. Then another thing you need to remember, another thing you need to recall is that uh, in feeling electron, okay, uh, you feel the one in the lower energy level before the one in the in the higher energy level. All right. So I think uh, oh, I will do that in the next video as my board just fell off. All right. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share. Bye-bye.